much, that's slurry, so the next 22 foot section, we could use it in the next 22 foot section. After that wall was in, we did that for the whole 3,000 feet approximately, but when we got to the path tubes, we couldn't go down and dig like that. What had to be done was we froze the water in the Hudson River around the path tubes where the wall was with refrigeration tubes down into the ground so the men now have a frozen wall there instead of an actual dike around there. They could get down there and dig to place our new wall in. Meanwhile, we have, say, 2,000 some odd feet of wall around there. As we start excavating down, and they start building this other wall, but they built the wall for the part around the path tubes. And I don't know if you ever got down the site and saw the path tubes about 30 feet up in the air being supported. That was being supported because we had to support the tubes up there. The slurry wall was going, not the slurry wall, the wall, the actual bathtub wall was going down to rock and it's two feet into rock. So we had to support the path tubes in the air, and so we got the walls in. However, when we start excavating that area, we had to place what they call were tiebacks. That's a steel rod going at a 45 degree angle into rock, because when you start removing earth in this area you want to excavate, you see the rock, so we could see the rock. The Hudson River and the dirt would push that wall in so these things went into the earth and rock, which we call tiebacks, and we applied post-tensioning on these so that as we went down, it applied a pressure against the Hudson River and the earth. I see. And we figured that when we start building floors, and by the way, that construction down there is seven levels deep, seven levels. The path tubes is between the fourth and fifth level going through the air. Yeah. So we did that all the way down to seven levels, figuring that the floor system will now hold the walls apart. And since the floors, seven levels, are holding the walls apart, we then cut these post-tension rods off because they used to leak, they used to smell, and we didn't want that. Which brings the problem to date where when that whole building structure came down, we don't know how much of that wall was damaged with all that weight coming down. And the weight of that building was like around 450,000 tons per building. We don't know what the structure did to that wall down below. And with the path tubes in the vicinity there, we don't know if that wall was penetrated, that water could build up, from the Hudson River coming in, go into the path tubes, flow back into New Jersey, which is at a lower elevation than we are, and be flooded out. However, I understand that the path people have some method of plugging those path tubes so this doesn't happen. I and I hope I it doesn't happen. So far, so good. I don't think we've had that problem to date. Has any of the people that have been working on that uh, ever gotten in touch with you as being one of the engineers to get your opinion about anything? No, and thank goodness they didn't, because I wouldn't even know today where the as-built drawings were since I left there in 1969, and they have capable people at the Port Authority, I have to say that. Mm -hmm. Capable people there, and they know where. The new people know where to look for plans better than I would. So I would be a, I think I'd be a hindrance. Right, but I imagine when you were going through all of these problems and solving these problems, it must have been sleepless nights. Yes and no. Yes, because we had to come up with a plan, and no, because we knew we had experts to do the work for us. Like, we performed wind tunnel tests on the two towers to see that, and before I forget that, wind tunnel tests to see how much air we could blow through there, hurricane air, and whether that would be too much to suck the windows out of the World Trade Center. That was number one. And number two, we had all those columns in there because the windows were narrow. That gave people a sense of security to know that their shoulders could not go through the window by yeah, standing right. at the window oh, looking yes, out. Uh, right. And we also did a study where we had a room hanging from a long rope, and we swung this room at a certain frequency to see 
when a person became aware of the fact when they were writing that the building was moving. So all that was done. And in fact, I even have a picture here of me in an elevator with my other people in the office standing in a freight elevator to see how many people the freight elevator would hold and how fast we could evacuate it in the event we had to do an evacuation in the freight elevators itself. So a lot of studies were done to make sure that that thing stood. Getting back to the towers, we finally hit rock. You know rock will fracture too if you have 450,000 tons of load coming down on it. So to prevent that, we had to build a grillage foundation from the columns coming down to the base plate and beams at right angles to one another and high strength concrete to sit on the bedrock so that the bedrock would not fracture. And then we tied that building into bedrock. That's why I knew when I saw that building hit by a plane, it would not go over. But I was shocked when I saw the building come down like that, story by story, pancaking. Just like you've heard of buildings being constructed, new buildings, where a contractor putting a building up, they try to move forms before the concrete is hardened. And when they do that, the concrete fails and it pops down one on top of the other. I looked at that in horror. I said, I know lives are gonna be lost here when that happens. And it was a traumatic experience for me. Yes. Um, you uh, live in Brooklyn. Are, can you see the World tra uh, Towers from your place where you live at? Not where I am, but if I go out and look around a little corner, yes, I could see mm -hmm. it. And we had restaurants in Brooklyn where I always used to sit at the window and look and admire the World Trade Center. I haven't gone to one of those buildings yet since this disaster because I don't know if I could cope with that traumatic experience yes, at this yes. stage in life. You saw it collapse on television, didn't you? Yes, I did. And when I saw that, you know, my son came running down the stairs, and he said, turn the TV on. I don't know what he was talking about. I thought, he looks at television when he's home 25 hours a day, you know. And so I thought it was just another thing, and I saw the tower out there, and a fire coming out of it. And the next thing I saw, I thought it was a uh, that inferno picture that they had, the towering inferno. I thought that was it. Then when I saw this plane come around the side, I looked, my mouth flew open. I knew this was for real. And that's when I said, oh my God, I actually cried. I said, oh my God. I said, approximately 10 years of my professional engineering life was erased and then I realized then too that people were going to be killed because when you apply that much heat to steel it's going to fail it gets soft steel is very strong in tension and compression both in fact they even use steel in columns concrete columns because concrete can't take as much compression as steel however concrete is cheaper that's why you can use a lot of concrete. Um, so when that building came down, with, this hit, with all that heat hitting the steel, I knew it had to fail. Steel, we have what you call a stress-strain curve, where you come up on a stress-strain curve to say 24,000 pounds per square inch, then it drops off like this. You have a molecular change in the steel itself, that it goes up like this and it'll go up all the way to, before it fractures, to around 40 or 60,000 pounds per square inch. In other words, we don't design for the uh, tension up in here or compression up in here. We design on the proportional limit area. So we have a lot of fat there, if you want to call it that, as far as safety measure. But when you apply that much heat to steel and it becomes soft, it's like moving forms from around a concrete structure. It just pancaked right down, right down to the end. 